गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंग्लिश क्लास वी आर डूइंग लेसन फोर इन द किंगडम ऑफ फूल्स ऑफ बुक मोमेंट्स इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द राइटर एंड समरी ऑफ द स्टोरी नाउ टूडे लेट इस डिस्कस द टाइटल ऑफ द स्टोरी एंड द एंड डू द एक्सप्लेनेशन पार्ट लेट इस डिस्कस द टाइटल इन the kingdom of fools which means the state the place where people are not so wise they are not intelligent in this story the king his ministers and his advisers are fools that means they are not wise and intelligent when that kind of people rule the kingdom then what all happens has been told in the story it is believed that fools are so dangerous that only very wise people can manage them who are fools in this story what happened to them let's see in this story in the kingdom of fools kingdom of fools means the king and his minister both the king and the ministers were idiots idiots means unwise unintelligent they didn't want to run things like other kings so they decided to change night into day and day into night they ordered that everyone should be awake at night till their fields till here means to cultivate land for farming and run their business only after dark and go to bed as soon as the sun came up anyone who disobeyed would be punished with death the people did as they were told for fear of death the king and the minister were delighted at the success of their project now let's see what is given the king and the minister ordered that the work which was done at night would be done during the day <laughs> how funny it is uh, during the day and the work which was done during the day time will be done during night time the farmers would do farming at night and the ones who run business would be do business at night let's see what happened uh as soon as the sun came up anyone who disobeyed would be punished with death the people did as they were told for fear of death the king and the minister were delighted at the success we have read this anyone who disobeyed, uh, disobeyed would be punished with death the people were scared that if they didn't obey the order they would be sentenced with death penalty so they are forced to obey this order the king and his ministers were very happy that all the people in the kingdom were following their order so uh, stupid those uh, ministers and advisers were uh, one day a guru and his disciple arrived in the city It was a beautiful city. It was broad daylight, but there was no one about. Everyone was asleep. Not a mouse stirring. Stirring means moving around. Even the cattle had been taught to sleep by day. The strangers, the two strangers, were amazed by what they saw around them, and wandered around to, uh, around to, town till evening. when suddenly the whole town woke up and went about its nightly business one day a saint a guru here means guru means saint one day a saint arrived in the kingdom of fools along with one of his disciple disciple means follower uh, arrived there he saw the it was a beautiful city he guru saw that it was a beautiful city it was a sunny day but couldn't find anyone around they were surprised everyone was asleep and even not a mouse was stirring stirring means moving around moving here and there uh, it means even the uh, tiniest creature the mice were asleep the people had taught their cattle to sleep during daytime cattle also are taught to sleep during daytime so everyone human as well as animals were sleeping now these two strangers who were the two strangers in the city the guru and the disciple now these two strangers 
गुरु एंड हिज डिसाइपल वर नॉ वर नॉट अवेयर दैट दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑर्डर हैड बीन पास इन दिस सिटी बाय द किंग एंड हिज मिनिस्टर्स दे कैप्ट ऑन वंडरिंग अराउंड इन द होल सिटी एंड एज सुन एज इट वॉज नाइट एवरी वन वोक अप एंड स्टार्ट डूइंग द वर्क स्टार्ट डूइंग द बिजनेस द टू मैन वर हंगरी नाउ वट द now that the shops were open they went to buy some groceries to their astonishment astonishment means surprised they found that everything cost the same a single dudu dudu uh, money in uh, kannad language a term of money in the kannad language whether they bought a maiyo of rice or a bunch of bananas as we discussed earlier in video that the writer of the story ekaramanunjan was a kannad writer so the term the, of uh, the dudu term used for the money is being used here it cost a, dudu, a bunch of bananas it cost a dudu the guru and his disciple were delighted they had never heard of anything like this they could buy all the food they wanted for a rupee now what happened let's see the guru and his disciple were very hungry when the shops um, opened at night they went to buy groceries whatever they bought from the shop costed one dudu the things were very cheap whether you buy a big bunch of bananas or a big bag of rice it costed only one dudu the guru and his disciple were very happy because the food in this kingdom was very cheap you could buy a lot of food just for a rupee just for a rupee when they had cooked and eaten the guru realized that this was a kingdom of fools and it would not be good idea for them to stay there this is no place for us let's go he said to his disciple but the disciple didn't want to leave the place everything was cheap here all he wanted was good cheap food uh, the guru said guru said that they are all fools this won't last very long and you can't tell what they will do to you next but the disciple would not listen to the guru's wisdom he wanted to stay the guru finally gave up and said do what you want i'm going and left the disciple stayed on ate his fill every day bananas and ghee and rice and wheat and grew fat like street side secret bull remember this line this line will uh, prove a turning point for the story in later part now what happened uh, when the guru and disciple cooked and ate their food when the guru and disciple cooked and ate their food the guru realized that this kingdom was a kingdom of fools and decided not to stay any longer the wise guru told his disciple let's move from here because that place was not right or safe for them and asked him to leave at once but the disciple was a foodie uh, he was a foodie foodie means uh, who loves to eat who loves to eat a lot so he did not want to leave this place because the food was cheap guru tried to make uh, him understand that uh, it should not be uh, safe for them to stay over here any more but uh, he denied to move from that place so uh, was so but the disciple was not fright uh, far sighted like his guru and so he wanted to live there only and enjoy the cheap food finally the guru left uh, that place that uh, kingdom and uh, leaving the disciple behind the disciple stayed back in the kingdom of fools every day he eat, ate a, a lot of food due to which he became as fat or oh, sorry as fat as a huge bull One bright day a thief broke into a rich merchant's house he has made a hole in the wall and sneaked in and as he was carrying out his loot the wall of the old house collapsed on his head and killed him on the spot his brother ran to the king and complained your highness when my brother was pursuing pursuing means following doing uh, his ancient train trade ancient trade here means uh, the business of looting or uh, burgling you can say a wall fell on him and killed him 
This merchant is to blame. He should have built a good, strong wall. You must punish the wrongdoer and compensate the family for this injustice. Now, what happened one day? One day, a thief entered a merchant's house, made a hole in the wall. When he was about to move out of the house, after looting all the things, the wall broke and fell down on his head. And he died there. Now the thief's younger brother went to king and complained that his brother was following his ancient trade, uh, means theft, and the wall was uh, fell on his head, and he died. The thief's brother was taking advantage of the king's foolishness. Now see the the persons who lived in their <laughs> that kingdom was making uh, use of the foolishness of the king. So he was taking advantage of the king's foolishness. He said that the merchant is culprit whose wall has fallen down on his brother's head. He should have made a strong wall. He requested the king to punish the merchant and get compensation for his family. The king said, "Justice will be done. Don't worry." And at once summoned the owner of the. house now what happened the king was so foolish that he did not consider that the uh, consider the fact that the dead man was uh, committing theft at that time of his death he only thought that the man died because the wall fell on him so he called the merchant when the merchant arrived the king questioned him what is your name such and such your highness uh, were you at home when the dead man burgled your house Yes, my lord. He broke in, and the wall was weak. It fell on him. The accused pleads guilty. Your wall killed this man's brother. You have murdered a man. We have to punish you. What happened now? As soon as the merchant appeared, the king asked his name. The king asked him whether he was at home when the thief was looting or burgling his house. the merchant uh, replied that he was at home only the thief made a hole uh, in the wall and entered uh, his house and when he was trying to go out the wall uh, the wall fell down on him because it was weak then the king told the merchant that he was guilty he did wrong due to his weak wall the thief died and now he would be punished Lord said the helpless merchant I didn't put up the wall it's really the fault of the man who built the wall he did not build it right you should punish him who is that my lord this wall was built in my father's time i know the man he is an old man now he lives nearby now what that merchant told uh, to the king he said Uh, the merchant pleaded to the king my lord it was not my fault the wall was weak because the person who made the wall did not construct it properly uh, so you should punish him he added uh, further that the wall was made during his father's time the person who built it was very old now he knew him as he lived nearby <coughs> let's move on to the next part the king sent out messengers to bring in the bricklayer bricklayer means a person who lays the bricks and build the walls the king sent out messengers to bring the bricklayer who had built the wall they brought him and tied hand and foot now what happened so the king sends his soldiers to call the bricklayer who built the wall <coughs> they tied his hands and feet and brought him in the king's palace uh, you there did you build this man's wall in his father's time yes my lord i did what he replied then king asked him uh, that did he build the wall and he replied uh, that yes he did that what kind of wall what kind of a wall is this that you built it has fallen on a poor man and killed him you have murdered him we have to punish you by death <laughs> the king said that the man had built a uh, built a weak wall and that wall fell on the poor thief's head and killed him the bricklayer would be punished for this with death 
Before the king could order to execution, execution, the poor bricklayer pleaded, "Please listen to me before you give your order." Orders, it's true. I built this wall, and it was no good. But that was because my mind was not on it. I remember very well a dancing girl who was going up and down that street all day with her anklets jingling, and I could not keep my eyes or my mind on the wall I was building. You must, uh, you must get that dancing girl. I know where she lives now. What this bricklayer, uh, told to the king. Everyone is passing on the blame to another person. When the king was about to pass uh, an order to execute the bricklayer, he requested the king to listen to him. He agreed that he didn't make the wall properly. It was because of a girl. Now he mentioned a girl here who was roaming around in the street and her anklet anklets were making a jingling sound and he was not able to concentrate on his work and so built a weak wall. It was not his mistake. It was the fault of the girl. He added that he knew where this dancing girl lived. She should be punished instead of him. You are right. The uh, case deepens. We must look into it. It is not easy to judge such complicated cases. Let's get that dancer wherever she is. The king was satisfied with the bricklayer's explanation. He tells that this case is very complicated and will not be able to solve it so easily. He ordered his messenger to get the dancing girl. The dancing girl, now an old woman, came trembling to the court. Did you walk up and down that street many years ago while this poor man was building a wall? Did you see him? Yes, my lord, I remember it very well. So you did walk up and down with your anklets jingling. You were young and you distracted him. So he built a bad wall. It was fallen on a poor burglar and killed him. You have killed an innocent man. You will have to be punished now. Let's see. The dancing girl had become an old woman and she was trembling as she entered the court. The king asked her that many years ago was she dancing and roaming around in the lane while the bricklayer was constructing the wall her movement distracted him she confirmed him he told her that as she was roaming around with her anklets jingling it uh, jingling it distracted the bricklayer due to this he could not do his work properly he built a bad wall which fell on the thief and he was killed it was because of her that the thief died and she would be punished with death so students today we will uh, do this only up to this page page number 22 on monday we will continue this story from uh, se the second paragraph of this page till then uh, make an activity of this lesson in your notebook and try to read out the uh, whole lesson yourself. Try to understand the story and note down all the difficult words with its meaning in your notebook. Thank you class.